We're talking about exponential functions. This unit is on exponential functions and logarithmic functions. And how they work together, because you have to kind of do them together because you know how when we subtract, uh, when we solve equations that have addition, we subtract, and when we solve equations that have uh, multiplication, we divide, and so they kind of go together. The same thing happens with these uh, exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So we've got to work with them together. So first thing we've got is exponential growth or decay function is a function that grows or shrinks at a constant percent of growth or decay rate. The equation, and there's kind of two different versions of it, and, and really just because one makes a substitution, but this is the one we're going to focus on right here. A times 1 plus r raised to the x power. So a couple things. 1 plus r means that it's growing because it's slightly bigger than 1. Okay, so you're multiplying by something that's slightly bigger than 1. It's going to get a little bit bigger. Um, and then x is in the exponent. We're going to find this out as time goes on, but a is your, like, init, oh, it's right here. a is the initial or starting value of the function. So it's what you're starting with. Um, r is the percentage of growth. Or if it's negative, it could be decay because it's getting smaller. It'd be 1 minus r. Uh, it's written as a decimal. And then b is called the growth factor. So b, 1 plus r, that's the growth factor uh, or the growth multiplier. Um, and then b has to be limited to positive values. You can't have a b value that's negative. It will never happen. Okay, so you're not going to have a decay rate of, well, b is just always going to be positive. It will never be negative. Okay. So that's our first uh, couple of definitions. We're going to see some examples. And I didn't turn this on yet. There we go. So India is the second most populous country in the world. The population in 2008, oh, in 2008, the population was about 1.14 billion people. The population is growing by 1.34% each year. Write an exponential function to model population and use it to predict the population in 2021, which is this year. I kind of made this problem up because of that. Okay, so a couple things that are important. It's growing by this amount each year. That's what tells us this is an exponential situation because it's growing by the same amount each year. Now this is, does it make sense that's the rate of growth, the R? So. We have to change that 1.34% to a decimal. Does anybody remember how to convert a percent to a decimal? You move the decimal, oh. you move the decimal point over two spaces. So as a decimal, this would be 0 0.0134. That is the R value. I suppose I should write down our formula, right? It was on the previous slide, but here's our formula. What was the first thing? Y equals or? You may have it written down. It was something A times 1 plus r to the x power, but was it, was it y? Oh, f of x? Okay. All right, so that's, the, that's what we're going to look at. So we need to find a and r. Really, those are the only two things. We already know r, right? We just found it. What was a? In general, okay, but yes, in general, though, what, what does a stand for? The year. Not the year. A stands for the starting amount. So the starting amount here is the 1.14. That's the population that we know about in 2008. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So to write out our function, here's what our function will look like. F of x will equal 1.14, the starting amount, 1 plus 0 0.0134 raised to the x power. Okay, so we just figure out the a, put it in, figure out the r, put it in. Now the second part, so that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is to use that to predict the population in 2021. Okay? Which means we need to figure out X, because then we can just put it into our calculators. So here's what we need to think about. Our starting time was 2008. That's like our starting time, so X is zero at that point. Does that make sense? So what we want to figure out is how many years after 2008 is 2021. Does that make sense? Uh, if x is 0, it's, these are the x's and these are the years. 13. So 2008, 
is zero. 2009 would be one. 2010 would be two. Does that make sense? Because it's how many years after 2008? And so she grabbed her calculator and she figured it out. How did you figure it out? Uh, 2021 minus 2008. It's been 13 years. So when we actually, so this is the first part of the answer. When we do this on the calculator, we want to know what is f of 13? What is the function value after 13 years? Now, if you've got a calculator that does parentheses and stuff, you can just type that all in kind of at once. If you've got a calculator that does not do parentheses, you probably want to simplify it a little bit and these two added together just be 1.0134. Even if you have a calculator that doesn't, you probably can add that together pretty easily. But if you have a calculator that doesn't do order of operations, you want to do this part first. This raised to this power, get that answer, and then times the 1.14. Do I get the exponent? It's one Good three. question. Thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. For your exponent, there's a little button on your calculator that looks like this on a lot of them. It's called the caret sign. So it'll either be that or some of them will have a button that looks like either y to the x or x to the y. And it'll look like that. So one or the other. I think this one has the caret symbol. It should be right. The answer. Oh, that's the answer? Yeah. It's right above the. Oh, yeah. Okay, so 1.17. Are we running to the 10? Yeah, well, they started with 1.17, so for 1.14, so we'll say 1.17 billion. Is that what everybody else got when they were typing it in? Oh, no. That's not the right answer? No. Okay, what is okay. it? Uh, I got point. Three five. If I did it right, one point three. Is everybody getting that? One point three five. Yeah, okay. I did two. I said I don't know why. Is that what everybody got? Or is it six if you round it up? It'd be six if we round it up. Although you're talking about billions of people, so one point three five, one point three six. Was everybody able to get that on their calculator? Was anybody not able to get that? I know you're using somebody else's calculator tonight. Were you able to get it? <laughs> well, for I don't used to say he learned to be a math teacher. Mm -hmm. But I was like, okay, so if you like smart, so I'm going to ask him, you know, like, anything like, like, okay, so does everybody know which button they need to use now for that exponent? Yes. And next week when you have your other calculator, we'll just have to look at it, or maybe you know how to do it on that one. I don't know. You'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I guess you'll have some homework to practice. Okay. So our, this is our model, and we get uh, 1.355 billion. The actual population, I looked it up for us so we could know, uh, 1.390. So relatively close, but not exact, right? It's a model. It's, it's used to predict, okay? So that model is 13 years old. They would have to probably update it if they wanted it to be more accurate. Does that make sense? So that's what models do. They help us predict, but that doesn't mean they're exactly right, okay? So are we okay with the 1.355? Everybody okay with how to get that? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Example two, a certificate of deposit or a CD is a type of savings account offered by banks, typically offering a higher interest 
uh, rate in return for a fixed length of time. So in other words, you have to leave your money there for a certain amount of time. You can't get it out. Um, fixed length of time that you leave your money invested. If a bank offers a 24-month CD with an annual interest rate of 1.2% compounded monthly, how much will a $1,000 investment grow over those 24 months? Uh, we're not ready to do this one yet. I don't know why I have this here. Okay, we're going to skip this one for now. We'll come back to it later because we will learn the formula for this in a little bit. I'm not sure why this one is at this point. Sorry. So just forget that for a second. All right, here we go. Bismuth 210, which is the name of this radioactive substance, is an isotope that radioactively decays by 13% each day, meaning 13% of the remaining uh, bismuth 210 transforms into another atom, polonium 210 in this case, each day. Ignore it. I should ignore it. If you begin with 100 milligrams of bismuth 210, how much remains after one week? Okay. So the first thing again that we need to do is write down our equation. Now, the difference this time is it's decay, right? So it's going away rather than growing, it's getting smaller. So Remember our formula, uh, f of x equals a 1 plus r to the x power, right? Same basic formula, but this time, instead of r being positive because it's growing, r is negative because it's decaying. So what do we put in in place of the a? The starting amount, and what, it, what do they tell us the starting amount is? 13%. Not 13%. If you begin with... 100 milligrams. So that's what we're starting with. And then one. Now, this 13%, that's the amount of change, right? So we have to change it to a decimal. What would 13% be? Say that again. 0.13. So we're subtracting because it's decaying, right? Does that make sense? Subtracting the 0.13. If we put a positive there, it's going to get more and more. We need it to get smaller and smaller. Now, again, I would probably just go ahead and simplify this. This is 0.87. If it's decay, oh, it's like 100 minus 13, but it has decimal. If it's smaller than 1, it's decay. If it's bigger than 1, that B value, then it's growth. Okay, so if it's growth, you're going to add to the 1. If it's decay, you're going to subtract from the 1. Now, so this is our equation. That's the first thing we have to do. The next thing we have to do is we need to find out how much is left after one week. Now, here's very important. And a lot of times you'll see this written as T for time. But what is our unit of time in this problem? Each day, it's decaying by 13%. Does that make sense? So our unit of time is days. Now the question is, how much remains after one week? So what do we have to put in for X? Seven. Seven, seven for seven days, right? So we're going to do F of seven, 100 times 0.87 raised to the seventh power. So go ahead, type that in. And actually, I think you can type the whole thing in all at once on that one, but you may want to practice the other way for your calculator. And what do we get? How much is left after seven days? 37.725. Okay. 37.725 milligram. Is everybody getting that or are we getting different answers? Yes. Okay. Was anybody not able to get that? People are just avoiding eye contact. They're like, I don't know. Um, yeah, and I ran about 37.73, but that is all the answer there. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, let's try another one. A, a population of 1,000 is decreasing 3% each year. Decreasing means it's getting smaller. Find the population in 30 years. So what's our unit of time this time? Each year. Each year, right? Per year. So years. 
Now again, our formula looks like this, f of x equals a times one plus r to the x power. This is years. That's our time. Okay, what is a? And what is that in this problem? It's, it's starting at 1,000. So 1,000. One. Now it's decreasing. Oh, let's, this is R. How do we, what do we have to write that 3% as? 0 0.03. Move over two spaces. So 0 0.03. And so that's going to go in here. Do we add 0 0.03 or subtract? Minus. Minus, because it's decreasing, right? And if we simplify, 1 minus 0 0.03 is 0.97. So there's our equation. Now, what did they ask us to do? Find the population. After 30 years. 30 years. So what do we do? Is it? Put the in as 30. Yeah. We put in 30 years. That's our time, right? We're going to put in a 30. So again, you're just going to grab your calculator. Whoops. 30. 1,000. 0.97 to the 30th power. Okay. Go ahead and try that out. See what we get. Now it's not decreasing very fast, right? So even after 30 years, it's probably still going to be a decent amount of people there. 401.007. Is it that low? Is that what everybody got? Yes. That's what I got. Oh, okay. I thought it would be higher than that. 401. Now, obviously, you don't have portions of a person there, right? So we just round up the nearest whole person. Okay. So 3% per year. I guess it is 30 years. So that's a lot of a lot of time to decrease. Okay. Good so far? It's the same formula each time. Yeah, We're going to go on to some other ones. Different questions. On the other ones, it's, the formulas are going to be different, but they're basically the same. It's going to be very similar, but they're going to be set up a little bit differently. Okay, let's take a look at example four. This time I'm giving you the equation and I'm asking you to tell me what all these numbers stand for. So here's, here's, the, here's the problem. TFQ represents the total number of Android smartphone contracts in thousands held by a certain uh, Verizon store region, measured quarterly since, uh, since January 1st of 2016. Interpret all the parts of the equation. Okay. So the first question is, what does T of two actually mean? It's, time. it's not time. 2,000 contracts. Two, uh, not 2,000 contracts. Yeah. See, this thing is, and they use weird letters. I don't know why they use these weird letters, but this is the total, probably T for total, the total number of Android smartphones, right? That's what the, t, the whole function is T of that. So that's the total. The Q on the inside is, oh, I see why, is measured by quarters. So it's two quarters. So two quarters of the year. They, they've, they've gone, quarters are like every three months, they have a quarter of a year, right? So they're saying it's the second quarter of 2016. That seems like a weird variable to me, but that's, I think, why they're using Q. So this means second quarter of 2016. Okay. What does the 86 mean? The beginning. The beginning what? Of the country. Yeah. And since this is in thousands, I heard somebody say this before. This actually means 86,000 contracts when they started, okay, with that regional store or with that region, okay? Uh, what does the 1.64 mean? Is it the measure? The growth. Quarterly? Yeah, it's dealing with the growth, okay, per quarter. But what does it mean? And what's the percent? What? So the one is always there, right? And we do one plus or one minus. So what's happening here? It's growing by 64%. It's increasing by 0.64, right? And then we would say that is 64% increase per quarter. Right? Because our time unit is quarters. Does that make sense? Okay. 
And we already had the two, so second quarter, Q was two. And then what does this tell us? The answer? Yeah, it's the answer. That's the, that's the T, T of whatever, right? So that means there are 231, because it was in thousands, 1,300, I don't know why this is rounded this way, but I'd probably say six, um, total contracts. Okay, so from what we know about that equation, always kind of looking the same, we know where the starting amount is right at the beginning. We know the growth part is one plus whatever, right? That's how we got the 0.64, 64%. And then we know the exponent is the amount of time. And then they give us the total. So that's the total amount of contracts. Okay, I don't know. If, I mean, I don't know if that's realistic or not. That seems like a lot of contracts, but maybe phones are really increasing drastically at that time, especially Android phones, evidently. I don't know. All right. Let's see if we can do this one. In 2009, 80 deer were reintroduced into a wildlife refuge area from which the population had previously been hunted to elimination. In other words, they were all gone. By 2015, the population had grown to 180 deer. If this population grows exponentially, find a formula for the function. Now notice this time, they did not give us a rate of growth, did they? Right? But we know the basic formula, right? So let's see if we can write down the basic formula. I've written it a whole bunch of times. You guys tell me, what's the basic formula? To the x. Might not be squared, might be squared, but to the x part. Okay, now, what do we know? Well, 2009, that's a time, but what does this 80 tell us? That's where they started. They brought 80 in and they put them there. That's the initial amount, right? So where does that go? A. A is 80. So we know that. We know it's growing because it says it increased to 180, right? We just don't know how much it was growing. So here's, here's how we're gonna be able to do this. Um, right here, our new amount of deer, that's the f of x, right? After, amount of uh, after an amount of time, now we have 180 deer, according to that, does that make sense? And how much time did it take to get from the 80 up to the 180? Six. Six years. And we know that because why? Minus 20. Yeah, from 2009 to 2015, so we just subtract. So six years. Where does the six years go? From the X. That's the X. Okay. Now, we've got to do some algebra to, to solve this. And again, we've got to peel away the layers when we do this algebra. So what do you think we would do first? Minus 80. We have to get rid of the 80. What do we have to do to get rid of the 80? Subtract. Not subtract. Because it is multiplied, right? So to get rid of multiplication, you're right. We've got to divide. So on your calculators, you can do that right away. Divide by 80. 1, uh, 10. Wait. And we're dividing. 2.25. 2.25? Yeah. Okay. Was everybody able to get the 2.25? Just divide. One, 180 Good. divided by 80. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the next thing, and this is the one that you probably haven't done before, and you, we may have to do some work on your calculators to get everybody in the right spot. But what, what do we have to get rid of next? The six. The six. How do we get rid of that six? Is it what we did last? We actually just did it on the test, except it was a three. We have to take the, six. actually, it's called the sixth root of both sides. Now the problem is your calculator does not just have a button that has a little six up there, okay? So on this side, it just cancels. Um, but what's gonna happen here, there should be a button that looks like, let me look at your calculator for a second. So they're different on different calculators, so. Okay, yours, a lot of your guys' will have a button that looks like this. See how you're gonna put in that number? So here's what you're going to do to type this in. You're going to type in 6, then this button, and then 2.25. Um, and yours are a set. Let's see. You got the same. All you guys have the same one. You've got a different one. You've got it. Yours is going to be 
And then the second, this, and then 2.25. Because he's telling you six is in that button, and then 2.25. Oh, here it is. It is rolling right there. The I was doing it like this. Because that would cancel out and it would be one plus R. Yeah. So I did one minus six. Two okay. What are we getting when we do that? Is it one point one one four four? Yeah. One one four four? Did you find it on your calculator? Oh, I do. It's dead? Okay. All right, was everybody able to get the 1.144? Okay, so 1.144 is on the left hand side. Okay, and then what's the last thing we have to do to figure out what R is? Minus one. Subtract one, and that's really easy because when we subtract one, that just goes away. So R is 0.144. So now we have to go back to the question, right? What did the question actually ask us? Find a formula. So now we can plug in the A and we can plug in the R. Those are the only two things we needed, right? We just didn't know what R was. So our formula is f of x equals, what goes in there for the A? 80. 80. That was the starting amount. One plus the 0.144, the x power. Now again, you probably add the one and the 1.44 together, but that's the idea, okay? So that's the answer. That's our answer. I guess I put the seven on the end. So that one was a little bit different because this time they didn't just tell us what the rate was and what the initial amount. We had to figure out one of them. And I guess I use T. Like I say, I usually use T because it's always time. So anyway. Okay. Are we okay up to that point? Does that make sense? We'll find out when we go try some homework problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one of the most common places that uh, exponential stuff gets used is when you're talking about uh, things that grow continuously or things that are interest compounded a certain number of times. So this is what we call the compound interest formula. And uh, you, this is something I'll probably give you on the test, but you will want to write it down for your homework and stuff. So make sure you have that written down. And each of those letters stands for something specific. But it's very similar to what we were just doing. Notice we still have that A there in the front. What does the A still stand for? The starting. The starting amount. Now, in this, uh, in this uh, context, we call this the principal. It's the starting amount of money that you either put into the bank or maybe you borrowed it from the bank because this could be a loan or it could be uh, a bank account that you're earning interest on. So the A is the starting amount in the account. Is, is, is that, that KT? K times T, yeah, that's really okay. small, sorry. So in the exponent, you have K times T. Okay. Me too. So um, notice, instead of just one plus R, what do we have? One plus R divided by K. Now R is still the, the rate. And for a bank account, it's interest rate, so it's percentage, and then you still move it over two places, change it to a decimal. So annual percentage of interest, APR, also called the nominal rate, um, but it's going to be a percentage. K is the number of times it's compounded per year. So if it's compounded twice a year, K is 2. If it's compounded quarterly, we talked about quarterly, that means 4, 4 times per year. If it's compounded monthly, what would K be? 30. Monthly? 12, because there are 12 months in a year, so uh, once a month. I was thinking. What about days. if it was compounded daily? 365. 365. Okay. So um, K is how many times it gets compounded each year. Compounded means you get paid a little bit of interest. Okay. So any of you guys have a bank account that pays you each month a little bit of interest? No, Unfortunately, the interest rate is so low now, you don't yeah. get anything hardly, but anyway. Um, but that's what the K is. And then the T, so the K is in here twice. It's down here and it's up here. And then the T is the time, and that's always in years. K times T up in the exponent. Here, let me write that a little bit bigger. K times T. There you go. Now it's hopefully big enough to see. 
And then the capital A of T means the new amount in the account after a certain number of years. That's what that side means. Okay. So now we can go back and do that other problem. I don't know why I had it way up there in the front, but here we go. Let's go back to that number two. This one. See if we get the right answer. So here's our equation. A of T equals A one plus one plus R over K to the K times T power. Okay. So let's identify these parts. A certificate of deposit is a type of savings account, blah, 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 blah. A 24 month CD. Okay. That's a time, right? Where is that going to go into our equation? The on, the, on the K. It's actually the T because it's an amount of time going by. But what do we have to put in? Because in this formula, the time is always in no. years. Two. We have to put in two because 24 months is two years, right? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to start putting this in. I know that T is two. Um, annual interest rate, 1.2%. What is that? The R. That's the R. So that's going to go in. I know I've got one plus, and, and since it's a percent, how do I have to change this? 0 0.012. 0 0.012. Okay. Compounded monthly. What does that tell us? Yeah, what's 12? K. K is 12. Now remember, K is in there twice. K is down here, and K is also up here. Okay, how much will a $1,000 investment grow? Well, what's the 1,000? That's the starting amount. That goes right here. So A of T, okay? Now, when you type this in, again, this can be a little bit challenging. We might want to do some simplifying. Uh, when you divide this, it ends up being 0 0.001. So this would be 1.001, and this would be 24. And once it looks like that, then it's normal to what we were doing before, right? So we just simplify inside the parentheses and then simplify the exponent. And once you've done that, then you can just go ahead and type it in. And what, hopefully we get this. Oh, wait, two. I forgot to bring my calculator today, so. Is that what we got or not? That's right. Yeah. You got that? Okay, and with money, just standard, you always round money to the nearest cent, so always two decimal places for money. Just like people, you always round off the nearest whole person. We don't have any partial people walking around. Oh, look at that arm walking around. Okay. Okay, so $1,024.28. Were we able to get that? Okay. I'll assume yes, since nobody's saying no. All right. So let's move on here. And all right, this is what we were just looking at. So this is the equation we just used, right? They always leave it up there, I guess. Okay. But you've got A, you've got R, you've got K, and you've got T. You've got those four variables. And then the A of T, which is the new amount, capital A of T. So here's another example. Uh, you invest $3,000 in an investment account paying 3% interest compounded quarterly. How much will be there after 10 years? So let's go through these numbers. What is this? A. And it's the lower case. It's the starting amount, right? Mm -hmm. So 3,000. And then we got one plus. Okay, we got all these things. Okay. So what's the next number we see here? 3%. What is that? The rate R, and how do we have to write it? 0 0.03. Okay, and compounded, oh, it's not, it's not written as a number, it's a word, but what does that tell us? What number? Four. Four. Quarterly means, what is four? What letter is the four? K, number of times compounded. So four, remember, goes down here and up here. And then what else do we have? Uh, Ten years. And that's the T. So they're saying, what's the new amount in the account after 10 years, correct? Now let's, again, we probably need to do some simplifying, 3,000. Uh, 
1.0075, I think. And this would be 40. So then once you've got that, you just type it into your calculator. And we hopefully get the right answer if I did my little bit of math right. But you're definitely going to, like I say, you're going to want to use your calculator. <laughs> And, you, and again, this is money, so we'll round off to the nearest cent. So when somebody gets an answer, let me know. 4,045. Yeah. 4,045.0458. Should be five, 0, 0, 5. So 4,045 and 5 cents. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's what we got. Okay. Now that's if you leave it there for 10 years and you don't touch it. So we always like to touch our money, right? Spend it or hopefully save it. Does that make sense? When you get your taxes back, then you put it away. You never touch it, right? No touching it. That's me. I'm like, let's just save it. My wife is like, we have money. Let's spend it. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go buy me the time. I'm like, I think we already spent it. That's the problem. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's our problem. Okay. A 529 plan is a college savings plan in which a relative can invest money to pay for a child's later college tuition. And the account grows tax free. If Lily wants to set up a 524 account for her new granddaughter uh, and wants the account to grow to $40,000 over 18 years, and she believes the account will earn 6% interest compounded semi annually, which is twice a year, how much will Lily need to invest in the account now? Okay. So if you notice, what do we not know this time? Actually, let's just go figure out what we know. So 40,000, we have to be careful. What is that? That's she, what she wants. That's what she wants it to become after 18 years, right? So that is the A of T. Does that make sense? Yes. So we're going to set this up 40,000. I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to have to put this over here, I think. So this is still the same formula. I'm going to put it up here, 40,000 equals okay uh 18 years pretty clearly that is the time that's the t so we're going to have this and then uh times 18. all right she believes the account will earn six percent that would be amazing right now because nothing gets six percent right now unless you maybe take out a loan so what do we what is that and what do we have to do with it make it a decimal so it would be 0 0.06, and what does it go in place of? The R. The R. So that's going to go in here. 1 plus 0 0.06. Uh, what else? Compounded semi-annually. Again, it doesn't look like a number. It's a word. But what does that tell us? It's 2. Twice a year, so K is 2. Right? Does that make sense? K is 2. That's from this. So 2 and 2. And what else? How much will she need to put in? So we're going to put it. We are trying to figure out. Hey, that's what we don't know. How much does she need to put into this account so that it grows to be the right amount when her granddaughter gets to college age? Okay. So let's do some simplifying. 40,000 equals A. Uh, this would be 1.03. And this would be 36. Does that make sense? 0 0.06 divided by 2 is 0 0.03, and then 2 times 18. Now, this one looks similar to the one we did before, but it's not exactly the same. Do we see that we can actually just do this work? 103, uh, 1.03 to the 36th power? Now, we're going to have to try not to round it too far, but what do we get? Give me probably four decimal places. Oh, it's two something. Wow, hang on. What is it? Last number was two. Okay, is everybody getting that? Yes. Okay. And then what do we have to do to figure out A? We divide, right? Because it's A times that. So we just divide by this number. If you want to use the answer button on your calculator, that might be a good idea also. So what is 40 divided by 
That? Okay, now if we're gonna invest some money, are we probably gonna do it like that? And uh, $13,801.67? Yeah. We're probably gonna say about $14,000 you have to put in or some rounded off amount. I don't remember what I put down. No, you don't put it in. You just put it in one time and the interest gets paid twice a year right. and it will automatically grow to that amount if you just leave it alone for 18 years. If you're getting 6% interest rates, like I said. So I guess I rounded it off to that. Probably in real life, you're gonna leave it like 13,800 or 14,000 and just say that. Okay, does that make sense how we do that? Okay, but all again, all kind of the same formula, related to the same formula. Okay, now, uh, one thing that happens because interest gets compounded a certain number of times per year, is you actually get a little bit more interest uh, because of it getting paid more often. I don't know if that makes sense. But like, let's say you're getting that 6% interest. In a year, if you started with, let's say, $100, 6% 6 interest would be $6. Okay? But if it gets compounded a certain number of times, you'll actually get a little bit more than $6 of interest. Because after the first time it compounds, you have more than $1,000 in there. So now you're getting interest on a thousand plus a little bit. And then the next time it grows a little bit more and a little bit more. So what happens is they have what is called the annual percentage yield. The APY, I think they call it. Yep, there it is, APY instead of the APR. And the APY is how much it actually grows in a year. What percentage it actually grows in a year based on its um, compound. So notice what they've done is you take the formula for the new amount and you subtract one because this is how much the new amount is and you subtract one, that's how much it grew. That's the percentage that it grew, okay? So there's another formula. Again, I'll, I'll probably give that to you. I don't know if you'll need that one. That's not as big of a deal, but I wanted to talk about it um, here. Does everybody have that written down if they want it? Okay, I'll wait. You know, this is what I do for work, and I didn't know that's what it was. Oh, well, now you do. <laughs> Sorry. Jack Henry, I see it now. It's on your sweatshirt. Is that um, K? Yeah, just to the K power. Because it's just after, what they're saying is T is just one here, so that's why there's no T up there. Because they're saying after one year, how much does it grow? Okay, everybody have it now? Yes. Okay. So bank A offered an account paying 1.2% interest compounded quarterly. Bank B offers an account paying 1.1% interest but compounds it monthly, right? So they're paying you more sooner and more frequently, um, which is offering a better rate. So what we wanna do is we wanna find that annual percentage rate, sorry, annual percentage yield for each one based on the information they give us. So let's find the APA. APY for bank A, and that is one plus R. What is the R for bank A? 1.2. Point, oh. but again, we got to change it, right? So what would it be as a decimal? Zero, one, two. Zero, one, one, two. two. Yep. So point zero, one, two divided by its quarterly. They hide those numbers in there. What does that mean? Four, four. Quarterly is four. And then K is four, right? Mm -hmm. So again, if we do a little simplifying, 1.003, I think, to the fourth power. Uh, and then I forgot, minus one, sorry. Because that one, if you think about what that one represents, it's re representing 100%. You start with 100%. You don't want to count that 100%. You want to count only the amount that it grew. <clears throat> What do we get for this one? 0 0.0120. Hang on, one more. Say that again. 0 0.01205. Okay. And if we change that to a percent, uh, that's too low. 0 0.012. Like that? Yes. Okay. Oops. 
So what are we getting? We're getting about 1.205%, which is just slightly more than that 1.2, right? You just get a little bit. It's not like it's like triples, but you get a little bit more because of the interest. Okay. So that's the APY for bank number one or bank A. Now we do the same thing for bank B, APY uh, one plus. What is the rate this time? 0 0.001. No. Uh, 0 0.011, sorry. And K is, what is it this time? 12. Oh, I do not like this number. Why did they do this to me? I can't do that in my head. Okay. With one like this, that comes, it's going to be messy if you try to type that in. I would just try and type the whole thing all at once with parentheses, if you can. Because 0 .0, 0 0.011 is not going to divide nicely by 12. The others have so far. That's why I was able to do them. Oh, and then minus 1, sorry. And what do we get with that? I got 0 0.011. Zero. Yeah, me too. Like that? Yeah. So that'd be 1.1. No. Yeah, 1.1%. That's hardly anything then. Is everybody getting that? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So they're really not gaining hardly anything because it's such a low percentage, evidently. Bank A is the better deal, right? Now, the idea is that even if the percentage is lower, the yield could be higher if you're compounding more frequently, but it doesn't change that much. Okay. Does that make sense that A would be a better a better option, even though it only pays quarterly? Are you having trouble with your calculator? Yeah, I think you have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. No, go ahead. <laughs> Good for you guys to teach each other. I just hope you do it right. <laughs> And were there some other numbers after that 0 0.0110, I'm assuming? Just so small of numbers that didn't matter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. So sometimes things grow continuously, or actually can decay continuously as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when things grow continuously, you can't say how often they get compounded because they're always changing, like every half a second. Okay, And I will say a lot of times banks, if they give you a loan, a lot of times they'll do it this way, or they might do it daily. It just kind of depends on the situation. But things that grow continuously, like for instance, um, a population of something as it grows you're not it doesn't like grow only once every week or only once every uh, month it's growing constantly okay as things are born and things die that it changes at a continuous kind of a rate so anytime you have this continuous growth or continuous decay you're gonna see a formula that looks like this now notice it's kind of similar but instead of A times parentheses 1 plus R divided by K, what we have is, I'll write it a little bit bigger in case you can't read it. It says A times E to the R times X power. Okay? A is still the starting line. R is still a percentage. It's a growth rate percentage. X is still the amount of time. And E is the one thing that's different. E is actually a number uh, called Euler's number. That what they did is they took that that equation that we had, one plus R divided by K, and they made K get really really big. And they found out, oh, this always goes to the same number. And so they set that number, and it's on your calculators as E. Now on your calculators, usually it's going to say E to the X, and it's on the same but button as the LN. Uh, usually, I guess that's capital LN on the calculators typically, but it's typically over to the left hand side. On yours, I don't know where it is, it might be on the top or somewhere, but have you guys, everybody see that button? Okay. And so, usually 
I can't remember which one. I think it's set. You'll have to do second or shift, and then ln, and that will give you the e to the x. Again, depending on what calculator you have. So this is a formula for things that grow continuously. So anytime you see that word, um, continuous, 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 automatically you know you're using this equation, this formula. Okay. So here's an example. Radon 222 decays at a continuous rate. That's your hint. 17.3% per day. Now this one's a little tricky, so we'll have to make sure we talk about it. How much will uh, 100? How much will 100 milligrams of radon 222 decay to in three days? That's a word in phony. But anyway, our equation: a of t, I guess a of x equals a times e to the uh, r times x power. I always use t, so this is throwing me off to use these x's. Okay. So, um, what do we know? Lowercase a is, and how much is that? How much are we starting with? 100. 100 milligrams, right? That's the amount of radon that we're starting with, 100. Okay, then we're going to have the E. What is the R? Uh, I'm going to wait with the R for just a second. What is the X or T if you're me? Three days, right? And it's per day, so that's good. Three days, so that's going to be up here. Now, here's the part that's a little bit different. Because that rate is. Uh, a rate of decay. Remember how we did one plus or one minus, depending on if it was growing or decaying. So if we've got if it's decaying, seventeen point three percent. That's point one seven three, right? We've Should got to back? what? Could it go back? We've got to do one minus that, just like we did in the parentheses before. We did one plus or one minus. We've got to do one minus that. So. 1 minus this ends up being, and you can do that on your calculator, it's going to be 0.827, I believe. Okay? And that is our rate. And it's smaller than 1, so it's decreasing. Okay? So looking at that, now we've got to type that into our calculator. And again... Uh, so if you're going to do this with your calculator, if you're going to try and type it in all at once, you may want to put parentheses here, or it may be easier just to take that 0.827 and times three and get that number and put that number there. But usually, at least on these blue calculators that a lot of you guys have, I know when you do this and you do that second LN button, it automatically does this for you and it puts the parentheses there. And then you just type in the 0.827 times three. Is it one one nine five point three two? I don't know. What is it? One one nine five point three two. Um, that's too big. That is too big. Is it? Something's wrong. Oh, it's you know what? Like, um, no, I think you're right. I think I did this wrong. Here's what we have to do. Because it's decay, we just put it in as a negative. Sorry, my fault. There are different formulas you can use in this one. So we're just going to put in point negative 173. Point negative point 173 times three. That's the that's what we need up there. So instead of taking one minus this, we actually just put in put it in as a negative because it's decaying. So you don't put the one. No, just this. Just we change this to a to a rate of 0.173, and we put the negative in front of it. Now we should get something smaller than 100. What do we get this time? Oh, good. That's the right answer. When it was bigger than 100, that was bad. So 59.512. So in other words, positive R values for these are going to be growth. Negative R values are going to be decay. Okay, but anytime you see that continuous, it's that formula with the E in it. Yeah. Will we always, will we always round it to the values plane? Uh, just in general, unless they, unless it's like, um, like if the context tells you, like if it's people, you round off the nearest whole person. If it's money, you round off the nearest cent. But otherwise, you pretty much kind of just round off the nearest three decimal places just to give us an idea. 
Um, this is milligrams, so rounding off to three decimal places is not a big deal. It just means that's how accurately you're you're measuring. Okay, does that make sense? I'm not going to get super carried away with rounding anyway. Um, in, in the in the computers, they may tell you to round to a certain spot, and so then you want to make sure you do that. Okay, how about this one? One thousand dollars is invested in an account, earning ten percent interest, compounded. Here's the magic word. Continuously. Continuously. Find the value after one year. So help me set this up. What is the 1,000? Mm -hmm. And what letter is that? A. The A. So 1,000. And then we've got E. 10%. Uh, what is that? The R. And we have to write it as? Point one zero if you want to, but we don't really need the zero because it's after the one. Now, positive or negative? Positive. positive because it is growing, right? Growing. So 0.1 goes up here. And then uh, one year. So where does that go? That's there, right? We don't even need it because 0.1 times 1 is still 0.1, correct? So the amount after one year, so 1,000 D to the 0.1 power is what we're going for here. And go ahead and type that in and let us know what you get. Is there a thousand? Now, this one is money, so we're out off in the air cent, right? So, what'd you get? A thousand hundred and five point one seven zero. So, be oh, I'm missing a one. What? $1,105.17. I'm missing a one. I just typed it in the wrong. Oh, okay. I'm missing a one. Okay. But I'm right. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Did you just have a one in front of that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was everybody able to get that? And ignore my typo there. That should be $1,105.17, not 105. Otherwise, their money is going away. They need to talk to the bank about what they're doing with their money. Okay. So, is everybody able to get that? Okay. And that's it. Now, tonight, or I guess this week. Okay, this will be due next week, Monday. The thing we need to remember is on just about every one of these problems, even if there's only one answer you're looking for, you almost always have to set up your equation first before you can type it into the calculator. Right? Because that was really a lot of the work was set up the equation, then type it into the calculator. Set up the equation, type it into the calculator. So make sure you've got your calculator and make sure you take time to set up your equation. And what you may want to do to help me out, if you have time, is you know where it has that place where you can put your work? If you type in your equation for me, then I'll know if you just messed up when you typed it into the calculator or if you had the wrong equation in the first place. Okay? Because underneath there's like a show your work box. I think you have to click on it, right? Before yeah, it'll. Yeah. So if you put your equation in there, that will help me out. So I know. I oh, yeah. I was like, I thought about that actually. Yeah. That talking about it. Okay. So um, that's it. Uh, next week. So here's the schedule kind of as we've got coming. We've got five weeks left. Is that what you said? Yes. So next week we'll cover four two. Uh, no, we're skipping four two. We'll cover four three and four four, I think. Those two. Anyway, two two more next week. Um, and then the following week, here's what we're going to do, and this is a little bit weird, but the following week we're going to have our test over 4-1, four, 4-3, four, and 4-4, four, four, whatever the three are, this one and then two more. Okay, it's going to be a relatively short test because we haven't had a lot more information. But, excuse me, but that night we're also going to cover uh, section 4-5 after the test. So we actually won't test on that but it's all the applications of the exponential and the logarithmic stuff that we're, we're talking about over that. But um, so, yeah, so that'll be a little bit weird, but it won't be, that won't be on the test because we won't talk about it until after the test. It will probably be on the final, but it won't be on that chapter five test. But it's gonna be really similar to what we did tonight. And then the following week we cover our unit five and then we have our chapter five test or our unit five test and then our final. So. Um, I'll keep reminding you and I'll keep sending it out in those weekly announcements. Do you guys get the, are you getting the weekly announcement things that I, or am I just wasting my time talking to myself? All right. Have a good evening. Have a good week. And I will see you next week. And I'll get these graded and put into Moodle grade thing as soon as I can.